Welcome to my currently very scary basement space. I am not going to spend a fortune on this basement, but I am gonna spend a little bit of time trying to make it feel a little bit more inviting. This is a large basement and this is a huge selling point for this house. If I lived in this house, this would immediately become a place for my kids to come and hang out. Right now, it very much looks like a place that I would use for storage. I want to plant the idea in their head that it could be used as a functional design space, so I'm gonna clean it up. I think I'm gonna pull out that desk as well. It is certainly useful space, but I think if this room is wide open, that would feel a little bit nicer. There's a piece of plywood on the back wall. I'd love to get rid of that. And then if I walk back through here, I have already addressed the laundry room. I shared this laundry room makeover only on Instagram, so you can go back and see my reel, but here is the Cliff Notes. It was terrifying. There was nowhere to go but up. And I knew that this would never be like the most boutique laundry room, but I knew that I could do a lot better. So I had the previous homeowners get rid of the washer dryer before they left. That was broken. It wasn't working. And then I came in and I demoed the platform that was here. I'm not sure why the platform was there, but because the previous homeowners had done it, I honestly felt like maybe they knew something about the basement space that I didn't. So I just went ahead and replaced it with pressure treated wood. So I knew it would hold up. I have a new washer dryer they are from LG and the best part about it is that there's a little drawer under the washing machine for just those quick washes that you need we don't have this in my house I wish I did it's amazing I went ahead and I painted all the walls and the floors again this is a little bit lipstick on a pig because this space is never going to be beautiful but painting it all white made a huge difference. If this were my house, I probably wouldn't hang out down here and fold laundry per se, but I definitely would come down here and have a bunch of laundry baskets going and there's a ton of space and I would set up a table and I don't think it's an awful space whatsoever. Right now, the biggest pain point is obviously the ceiling. I have priced it out to drywall the ceiling and it is not cheap. Unfortunately, the reason it's so expensive is that there are a lot of pipes and whatnot that come down below the drywall level. So not only would pipes be sticking out through the drywall, but it means that they would have to cut around them. So what I am going to do to start is I'm gonna pull down all these little miscellaneous ceiling tiles that have been hung up there. There's beadboard, there's drywall, there's just, it's a mess. Everything about the work in this basement was clearly a homeowner special. The number of materials that had been used to cover the ceiling, the number of fasteners that had been used, there was everything from nails to screws. It was such a pain in the neck to pull it all down. Once I started pulling down all the miscellaneous ceiling panels, it was clear that the previous homeowners had used this space to store all sorts of goodies. I tried to remove as much as I could, but I couldn't reach back in there. So every time I pulled down a ceiling panel, I had a little bit of a pinata moment. Stay tuned to see the weirdest thing that I found in here. This had clearly been the previous homeowner's workspace. And I thought about leaving that desk there because it actually worked pretty well, but ultimately I wanted to clear out and just make a blank space for myself so I could see what I was dealing with. This basement is actually pretty good size. There's two kind of areas. The front part is what I'm gonna clean up and add drywall to, but the back section is gonna be great storage if need be. There's a drawing desk that had been installed into the wall. I thought about leaving it there and maybe painting it a fun, colorful color, but ultimately I just wanted to get rid of all of the previous stuff because it was just old and bulky. So this had to come down. Remember how I mentioned there were all sorts of weird things stuffed up between the floor joists underneath the ceiling panels? So this was one of my favorite finds. It was a tin of hard candy that I pulled out and then wait for it. There were actually a handful of times when I found some old, um, protection, shall we call it? And it made me laugh every single time. Other items found up in there, I found a tambourine, I found some ping pong paddles, and then this. At first I thought it was some sort of dead animal. You know, look at it coming down, I was terrified. But then it turns out, it was just a wig. So when I shared all this on my social media, there was a lot of theorizing as to what was going on. The protection, the ping pong paddles, the tambourine, the wig, it all creates a real image that I'm just gonna leave with you there. 
With everything removed and demoed, it was clear that the main part of the basement where that ceiling was, was still pretty sloppy. There were a ton of wires and pipes and I think it made sense to cover it. So this is how the space looked after the drywallers left. I think the drywallers and my contractor got in a little bit of a tiff. So they kind of stormed off and <laughs> They finished the work, but you can see that the place is a disaster. It is all thin set, so it cleans up super easily, but in hindsight, it would have been smart of me to put down some RAM board or contractor's paper or something to protect the floor, because now the next step for me is to come in and clean it. I'm using a combination of my broom, I'm using a mop, and then my new favorite tool for this flip house, I think you can see me using it here, is one of those little scrubber attachments that you put into the head of your drill, and I just used some heavy duty cleaner here that would pull the grease up. Before I could paint the basement, I had to prime the drywall. If you paint on top of untreated drywall, the paint will just like fall down. This is me priming all the drywall that had just been patched and replaced. Kind of tedious, but has to happen. You'll also notice that the pipes that are coming down through the drywall, they are no longer that mustard yellow. I painted them with a high heat oil paint, so that was a huge improvement. And then came time for me to tape off the entire space so that I could come through with my sprayer. At this point, I am comfortable with my sprayer. We don't get in fights anymore. So I went through with that same flat paint that I used for the rest of the house. I was able to do the walls and the ceiling all at once. The best part about these can lights is that the newer models, they just unclip and they can pull down from the ceiling. So it was really easy to paint around them. I use this paint sprayer a ton in this house and I Love it, this thing is the best. But I will say paint sprayers are still such a pain in the neck. There's so much cleaning involved. Maybe if it had been in the summer and I could have just pulled it out and kind of hosed things off, it would have felt different. But it was in the winter, it was cold. Cleaning all the parts outside was just miserable. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm team paint sprayer or not. I mean, I'm team paint sprayer because look, I painted an entire house by myself in three or four days. So I can't lie that that is incredible, but I don't know, maybe can I hire someone to come in and just clean the paint sprayer? Is that a thing? I was really hesitant about painting this floor, partly because I was just lazy and ready to be done with this. I was hoping that it would be in good enough shape, but then once I painted the walls and the ceiling, it looked even shabbier than it had before. I also wasn't sure what type of paint this was, and I was worried that anything I put down had the risk of just peeling right off. But I did a bunch of research, and it turns out that with something like this, if you scrub it really well with like a TSP product, and then you use a certain type of paint and primer that Home Depot had, it's meant for you know, concrete floors, essentially. It should adhere. I made sure to paint a test spot, let it set up for a few days, went back in and really scratched at it, and it held up beautifully. So I actually think that I'm in great shape, and obviously it made the biggest difference, and painting floors is so easy, guys. The molding in the other part of the basement was not cute. I also don't even know if it was meant to be window molding, so it was a lot easier just to replace it all with this clean, basic one by three pine. My contractor helped out and built a box that sort of fit into that window well. So what you see me doing here is I'm just adding the decorative trim. I used my brad nailer to nail the trim pieces in place, and then I went back and I patched it. At this point in the process, I just wanted to be done with it. So doing trim work was probably not the best idea because my attention to detail was not exactly where it could be, but it looks great. I went ahead and I repainted all the windows and they look clean and bright and it made a huge difference and it's fine. It's a basement, right? I'm embarrassed to even admit this, but I was kind of thinking that I would just put this house on the market without any furniture. The thought of furnishing an entire house was kind of intimidating. I didn't want to pay a home stager because I think it's thousands of dollars and that, I don't know. I know it's worth it, but then my agent said, Charlotte, the one thing you do best is you find cheap stuff. So, duh, that's what I did. I didn't have a lot of rhyme or reason. I knew that I obviously needed like a couch in the basement and beds in the bedroom. So there were certain things that I was searching for, but then I was just kind of looking for anything that felt cute that was in my area that was cheap. And it all came together. And the best part is that I was able to sell just about all of it when I sold the house. The buyers bought a bunch of it, so that was great. And then I was able to just have a bunch of people meet me a day or two before we closed to come and get it all. And I just sold it for whatever I bought, so it went pretty quickly. And I don't think I made a lot of money, but I definitely didn't lose money. So that's pretty good for furnishing a whole house. And it was fun. It was like free shopping 
And that's how I made over my scary flip house basement. Be honest, you would hang out down here, right? Cause I totally would. At least I'd force my kids to go down and then I would hang out in the cute living room upstairs. Thanks so much for following along.